Live from our studios, here's Property TV. Hi, and welcome to Property TV. My name's Andrew Rybelt, and on today's program we have Australian icon, Laurie Lawrence, here to discuss pill safety. But before we speak to Laurie, here's Kevin Turner with the very latest in property news. Thank you. Well, I'm pleased to say that the median house price and sales numbers held up very well in the months leading up to December. This, of course, was despite the fact that we had six almost consecutive rate increases. We also had a federal election, and then we had that period that followed. Our agents are reporting fairly tough market conditions. This is due mainly to the fact that we have a lack of committed buyers, which really means that sellers are having to meet the market. Now, those in the industry are still very confident about Queensland's future going forward, largely due to the fact that we have a continual ongoing population growth, massive investment in infrastructure and, of course, the benefits that are flowing from the multi-billion dollar resource industry. Despite the fact that it's a softer market, I believe that Queensland's very well poised to come through this quite well. So what that underlines for me is the fact that there are still some very good buying conditions for buyers and sellers, provided you do it in the same market. In summary, all's good in the sunshine state. Thanks very much, Kevin. Earlier this week, we caught up with Laurie Lawrence at his swim school at Underwood to discuss the recent changes in legislation to pool safety, and also to discuss his program, Kids Alive Do the Five. Let's go and have a look. Laurie, thanks very much for joining us. Obviously, recently there's been some um, changes in legislation to pool fencing safety in Queensland. I'm sure from your perspective, they've been a long time coming. Look, I was involved many, many years ago when uh, Queensland government first brought in the pool fencing legislation. I think that was back in about 1988. Drowning stats in Queensland were at an all time high, record high. We had 27 children under five drown. Mm -hmm. They wanted to bring in pool fencing legislation. It wasn't palatable to the electorate. Mm. And so they thought they'd bring someone in to say, you've got to fence your pool. Well, I was the mug. In I came. And uh, drowning stats just went from 27 down to 13 immediately. One backyard pool death. And uh, the government then, I, I, they paid me to go all around the state and promote you've got to fence your pool. One backyard pool death and the government said, good on you, we've got the legislation in, no need to do it anymore. The interesting thing for me though was the drowning stats over the next couple of years when I wasn't out there promoting the drowning prevention was the drownings went from 13 straight back up to 26. The pool fencing legislation was in mm -hmm. but there was no education campaign out there. Yeah. So I went back to the government and said this is crazy, let's do this again. I did and the drownings went from 27, 26 this time, 26 down to 10. So I'm a believer in pool fencing, but I'm also become a very, very big believer in an education campaign that runs parallel with pool fencing. Because I believe that um, pool fencing is going to save those most vulnerable, those kids up to the age of two. But after that, my kids will shimmy over a fence, they'll open the gate, they'll get in, they will protect those kids and I believe you've got to fence your pool because how would you feel if one of these little toddlers wandered into your pool and drowned? You'd never forgive yourself. But on the same thing I'm saying to you, it's more than just pool fencing legislation. So I don't, th I don't like the big stick. I believe you should fence your pool because it is the right thing to do. Yeah, look, I agree. Obviously, as a parent myself, and uh, um, I've seen a lovely picture of your grandchild, it's, uh, it's a priority to make sure that that safety is in order. Look, the pool fence is one barrier. It's a whole range of barriers if we want to save kids' lives. The pool fence is a barrier. The gate's the next weakest link. So if you haven't got the correct gate, if you haven't got good hardware, if you haven't got uh, a magna latch like a magnetic latch from D&D technology and they've also got uh, the, the good hinges that automatically close, the gate's the weakest link. You need to make sure that's right. And of course for me, I'm a great believer in teaching kids to swim. And my granddaughter now, she's 19 months, she can swim anywhere. I can drop her in the pool, she'll turn around and get out by herself. So I'm a great believer in, in that's another barrier, that's another protection. But the best of all is supervision. Yeah. Keeping your kids with an arm's length at all times, that's the best way. And finally, your insurance policy, in case something happens, and that's learn CPR. Yep, uh, it's a, such an important thing. 
And as a, uh, a passionate advocate for pool safety in, in Australia with the summer months coming up, um, do you have some, some tips that could, could make sure that our families are safe? I think supervision is probably the biggest. I mean, the kids are live site. I don't know if there's people out there that, that get out on the internet and go there, but the kids are live site, um, you can go online. And I've created a water safety DVD. Yep. That's going to the parents, thanks to the federal government, it's going to the parents of every newborn in Australia for four years as a drowning prevention measure. And what I really think is if there's any people out there watching your program and they want one of these, just get online, send us a, an email, and we'll send you out a water safety DVD free of charge. And hopefully that may go a long way to saving some little lives this summer. Yeah. The other website that I can suggest that uh, for young parents or grandparents uh, as a dutiful grandfather, I've been videoing my first granddaughter every month since birth, every month. And so with the way the internet is now, where you can just download videos and that, I've done video streaming on babyswim.info. So every month, I put my granddaughter on there, what she's capable of doing now, and people can go and look and watch, and a few tips on what to do to get your child ready to submerge, to float. Laurie Lawrence, thank you very much. Thanks, mate. Babyswim.info. Get online and check it out. We hope you found that segment helpful. Now to this month's feature property. Ladies and gentlemen, a huge thank you for watching our latest edition of Property TV. And for any real estate information, please visit our website, redcliffe.com.au, or give us a call on 3883 9999, and wishing you and your family a very safe and happy summer period.